Morning, Journey Church. Morning. I'm Pastor James, and I'm excited to be the pastor of this church. Man, it's rocking. Amen. Yeah. Did, did that praise team rock the house? Amen. Yeah. Woo well, we're getting to the end of the series called Pave the Way, but I'm so excited to announce collected. You know, we've already, our goal was $150,000. We've got uh, committed $211,000, but as of today, we've collected our goal of $150,250. Amen. Yeah. So God has really so blessed us. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And, and today I'm going to be preaching on pave the way to the rapture because it's the next prophecy to be fulfilled in the Bible. Now, you know, what I was going to do is I was going to do the rapture, the rewards, and the wrath. Because, see, when the, after the rapture, the Christians will be up here getting the rewards if you got them coming. And the, then the others that don't go, They'll be go through the tribulation, it'll be the wrath, and then we'll be coming back, so it'll be the return. But it's Christmas time. So I'm going to be preaching on He is Here. Now, that's going to be a devotion that small groups are going through, but the whole church can go through. And if you want to, you can just scan this right here, and you'll get signed up. And every day, you'll get the devotion. You can read it. And if you're in a small group, that Sunday, you'll go over it. Or you can go over it and do it with your family or start your own small group and do it. Amen? So it's going to be great. So every day during the Christmas season, starting Monday, we're going to kick off a devotion. And if you don't know how to scan it, just text on the next step card, devotion. Also, Joy, you're fixing to go run for St. Jude's and for our granddaughter. You can scan on there if you want to help uh, support that and donate to St. Jude's in memory of our granddaughter. Or you can write on the next step card what you would like to do it, and we can do it that way. You can always scan or you can always write on the next step card what you want to participate. Also, if you want to get into a small group, we now have... Brent and his wife, they will meet you at the back door. They'll walk you to class, introduce you to the teacher, and then lay, meet you the next Sunday and say, hey, do you want to go back to that class or would you like to visit another class? And all our small groups know that they can visit as many classes as possible. Okay, now, you ready? Let's talk about the rapture, all right? The trumpet will sound. The Lord will shout. The voice of authority, the dead in Christ will rise. And then we who are alive will be caught up in the air to meet the Lord in the sky. I used to say, well, how come the dead in Christ beat us? Because when you die, you go to, to the Lord. So why do the dead in Christ rise too? Because they receive their new resurrected body. So they beat us. But then we're coming right behind them. I mean, what really is going to happen, there's going to be billions of people disappear instantly and billions of people left behind. There's going to be global chaos. There's going to be fear. There's going to be panic. There's going to be planes that are crashing. I was telling Mike Scott about it this morning, and I was telling the staff, and Mike said, well, next time I get on a plane, I want to make sure the pilot is saved. I said, that's good, Mike, but why don't you just make sure you're saved and you ain't got to worry about it. <laughs> you, he thought about it. Well, then I want to make sure everybody's on the plane is saved. I said, well, good. Just ask him if you can get the mic. He said, I really think I will because if, the, if it crashed and the people on the plane aren't saved, then they'd get killed. I said, well, just then the main thing is I'm trying to tell you, if they're on the plane and the guy's not saved, he's saved, he'll go and the plane will crash. Amen. But cars will crash. They'll be empty. They'll be wrecks. Uh, husbands and wives, one or the other will disappear. Can you imagine rolling over and saying, hey, honey, and she's gone and you're still there? <laughs> I told you. All the babies will be gone. All the children under the age of accountability. Can you imagine a mother and dad that don't know the Lord? And they wake up the next morning and boom. They go to get their kids, boom. They turn around and the kids are gone, boom, and twinkling out, and they can't find their kids. Can you imagine the chaos, the fear, the anxiety that's going on in their life? They're wondering where their kids are. Everybody that's sick will be healed instantly. The, the people with deformities healed immediately. The, the mental disabilities, no more. I know people that have given their life to take care of their children with mental disabilities. Uh, and they don't complain about it. I know some husband's wife. I know a lady that's given her whole life to take care of her son that's been mentally disabled. Can you imagine for the first time, in the twinkle of an eye, he's completely healed of all those mental illnesses, and him and her will get to see each other perfectly and talk to each other perfectly for the first time in their life. Won't that be something? They've never been able to do that. 
no mental illness. JD, they're going to put you out of business. Bring it on. <laughs> JD, I thought you were going to say you're not going to be here. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Don't be Mike. <laughs> like, they're going to put JD out of business. I'm not going to be here, right? <laughs> Amen. Amen. But that's going to be it. But, but till then, bring it on. Amen. <laughs> All right. There'll be unbelievable healing, healthy, holy, and happiness if you know Jesus as your Savior. If not, you'll have healing. You'll have hatred at the same time because all that's going on. You'll have people rejoicing and you'll have joycelessness. You'll have clarity because you know what's going on and you'll have confusion. You'll have fear, faith, comfort, and chaos all at the same time. It's just unbelievable what's going to happen. But let, let, let's, let's give the description of the rapture this is a good time because we put an outline in the bulletin and this is where it really starts because this is really cool because it says in first thessalonians 4 14 it says for if say if if, if is going to be so important and if is going to describe the whole rest of the message and for if we believe that jesus died and he rose again so if let me tell you what if if if's a big word here if you believe huh, you will leave if you believe you're going to leave if you don't believe you will grieve and you won't leave that's the message. You want to understand the rapture? There it is. If you believe that Jesus died and rose again. If you believe, you're going to leave. You're going to leave in the rapture. If you don't believe, you'll grieve and you won't leave. That's it. Pretty easy message. It's all wrapped up. You can understand it. Huh. So anyway, God was, if you believe, you'll leave. So God will bring with him those who sleep, who sleep, huh. that means you're dead in Jesus. For we believe that Jesus, for this, for this we say to you by the word of the Lord. Who's talking? The word of the Lord. You got God's word on this. That we who are alive and remain. That's me and you. Some of us are going to be alive at the time I believe that Jesus comes back. Until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are dead or sleeping. You know. For the Lord himself, he's going, to one, he's going to descend. He's going to send from heaven. He's going to send with a shout, the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Hmm. Then those who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall be with the Lord, always be with the Lord. And then he said by this, well, therefore, comfort one another with these words. I love that because he ends it up saying comfort one another with these words because if you're saved, we can comfort one another because we're going to see, we're going to all be with Jesus together. You can comfort one another because all the chaos going on in the world, all the wars all over the world, all the chaos in America today, you can't understand it, but you can understand it. Don't try to understand it. You can comfort one another because Jesus Christ had already prophesied all that's going to happen because you can just say, I can't understand it, but I can comfort myself. Jesus is coming. You don't have to un understand it all, but you can comfort one another. If you're a Christian, you're not going to be here. You're going to be gone. Amen? You can comfort one another because you're going to be with all your loved ones. You can comfort one another because everybody dead that you love that knew Jesus Christ, in an instant of an eye, you're going to all be together before. I mean, like you're running for our granddaughter, Kaylee. In an instant of an eye, I'm going to see Kaylee again. She'll be telling me what to do all over again. So I'm going to get to see her. I mean, all over again. Everybody you love, your parents, your grandparents, everyone that you know that knew Jesus Christ, in the instant you can comfort one another, you're going to be together everybody that's sick that needs to be healed they're going to be healed immediately everybody in the hospital that's saved they're going to be gone they're going to be healed i had annetta offered i saw her a while ago she's been in and out of the hospital for months and 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 a while ago this morning they brought her to see me and she's at church today and she's in a, a, one of the service today you know and she's struggling but she's getting better and better and better and I pray that God heals her but if it, Jesus comes today she'll be completely healed so I'm telling you everybody's sick everybody's healed everybody's dead everybody's passed in the instant of blinking of an eye we can comfort one another we're going to all be together amen 1 Corinthians 15 52 says in the flash in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet and the trump will sound and the dead are going to rise imperishable, and we will be changed. See, this healing will be instantly, be totally, and it'll be eternally. Those who are dead will be up instantly in the twinkling of an eye. I always heard, I love that. They said 70 is the new 30.
<laughs> I just didn't know they meant when the rapture comes. <laughs> if the rapture comes, my 70, I'll be 30 because I'll get a new body and I'll be healthy, happy, and holy. Amen? Come, Jesus, come. But come while I'm preaching. Don't come on Monday. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it says that's what, that's what it is, you know. Did you know that there'll be no mental disability, everything will be healed. Did you know, I often tell people, when you're having a real problem, make sure you medicate and meditate. You won't have to take any medicine because you won't need any. You won't even have to worry. You know, take comfort knowing there's going to be no more battles over evil and temptation. Isn't that going to be great? You, you don't have to worry about the bills anymore. No more worries because he's already paid the debt for all our bills, huh? See, when you start focusing on all you get and all what's going to happen for a moment in a twinkle of an eye, instead of being afraid, you almost long for it. That's what Paul did. He began to long for his coming. In 2 Timothy 4, 6, he said, For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. In other words, he said, Man, I'm fixing to die. He said, Listen, I'm being poured out. You know, when times are really tough in my life, when I'm really hurting, you know, I say, Come, Jesus, come. But when I'm, everything's great. <laughs> Finance is good. Life is good. I say, you can wait. Jesus, wait. But really, when I really hope he comes, really and truly, I hope he comes on a Sunday. I really do. We're supposed to be ready every day, and I'll show you how we're supposed to be ready, and we're supposed to be watching. But for me personally, I'd love for him to come Sunday. I'd love for him to come a Sunday when I say at the end of the service, anybody that wants to invite Jesus Christ in their heart, raise their hand. And somebody raised their hand. Like with last service, we had several people raise their hand. And I wish Jesus would come right at that minute. And man, and I was part of the raising the hand. I was part of seeing them get saved. And Jesus raptured us all home. That's when I really wish he would come. Because on Monday, sometimes I don't know if I want him to come. <laughs> but anyway, but, but that's what was happening. It, it was a tough time. But really and truly, we should always look forward to him coming. You realize when, when he comes, you realize when after he comes, there's no more bills to worry about? Wouldn't it be great to wake up every single day and never worry about another bill the rest of your life? Amen? And you just don't worry at all? Wouldn't it be great that, you know, in all your relationship with your kids, your grandkids, your grandparents, your wife, your mate, no more fighting? Everybody that's married, you better say amen. amen. No more fight. How about, how about your kids and grandkids? Amen. You just had Thanksgiving. I know some of y'all had fights. <laughs> but see, at, at this minute, at the rapture, oh, ooh, we all together. We all love each other. I love you. You love me. We're one big happy family. The rapture hadn't come yet, but you'd be wanting it to come when you're fighting. Won't be any fighting going on up and out there. No, no. no more sickness. You never have to worry about getting sick again. Your loved ones, nobody gets sick. Everybody's perfect, healthy. No mental illness, none at all. Man, it's going to be a wonderful time. And he said, I fought a good fight. I finished the race. I've kept the faith. Have you fought the fight? Or have you kept the faith? Are you finishing the race? Now, there's stored up for me a crown of righteousness. Now, see what I was going to preach on is about the crown of righteousness. See, we got the rapture, then we got the rewards, and he was looking forward to a crown of righteousness. See, everybody says, I'm just going to be glad to get into heaven. You'll be glad to get into heaven, but there's going to be rewards in heaven. See, what you do on earth, you don't work your way to heaven. That's by grace. It's free. You can't work your way to heaven. But because we're saved, we do work. And we do the right kind of works, we get rewards in heaven. So you want to get those rewards in heaven. So next Sunday, I was going to preach on the rewards we can get in heaven, but I'm not. I'm going to be preaching on Christmas, he's here. Jesus is here, Emmanuel. But after all that, I'm going to come back and preach on that. So what I, said, what I want you to know that there is rewards in heaven. And, and Paul knew that, and he was looking forward to it, and he wanted it. But, you know, see why they were getting rewards in heaven? Does anybody know what's going on in earth? What we call the tribulation. Nobody wants to talk about that. You want to make sure you're raptured. You want to make sure you don't want to stay behind because nobody wants to talk about that because in that time there can be times of intense heat. There'll be earthquakes. There'll be demon-possessed locusts that'll sting you like scorpions. There'll be 200-pound hailstorm. There'll be water that turns to blood. There'll be people crying out to die, but you can't die. But not me. I'm going to be in heaven. I'm going to get rewards. I'm going to be celebrating. I'm going to be no sickness. I'm going to look for my mama and my daddy and all my loved ones. I'm going to look forward to seeing them all and being with them all and everybody healthy, you know, having a new body, the best health they've ever been, looking the best they've ever been. I mean, some of you think you're good looking now. 
just wait till I get to heaven. <laughs> Look at this in a 30-year-old body <laughs> with hair <laughs> in shape. It's going to be great. Hey, watch what you say. Wish the Lord, the righteous judge, he's going to appear to me on that day. Not only to me, thank goodness, but also all too long for his appearing. Oh, he's saying that we should what? Long for his appearing. Did you know there's more in the Bible about getting ready for the rapture than is getting ready for Christmas? Uh Uh-oh. A lot more in the Bible about getting ready for the rapture than is getting ready for Christmas. Man, I've been getting ready for Christmas. Man, I got kids and grandkids and then more kids and more kids. You'd, you'd think I adopted the whole world. But anyway, you know, I started calling some of the grandkids. I said, Neil, what do you want? Can you tell me what you want? I'm trying to get ready for Christmas. Trying to, two or three of them say, yeah. Two or three of them said, I don't know. I said, this is how much money you get. Someone said, just give me the money. Just give me the money. That's fine. But if you want something, let me know. I'm trying to get ready. What if I was trying to get as ready for Jesus coming back? as I was for Christmas. I'd have a spiritual awakening like nothing else. I'm telling you, there's more in the Bible about getting ready for the rapture, Jesus coming, than there is Christmas. Now, I'm trying to get ready for Christmas, but I need to be getting ready for Jesus coming. Let me give you some insights on what we can learn about the rapture. Number one, you can know that he is coming. Because Jesus himself said, in John 14, 3, he said, Now, if I go... And he went, I'll prepare a place for you if you're saved. And I'll come back, he will, and I'll take you to be with me and that you also may be where I am. Jesus said, for sure, I want you to know, I took off, but I'm coming back and I'm personally going to get you and you're going to be with me. So number one, we know for sure that Jesus is going to come back and we come back, we're going to be with him. Amen? Number one, that we can. Number two, you cannot know the day and the time. If somebody preaches and they tell you he's coming January 25th at 10 o'clock, er- You just know that he's a liar. Now, we have people doing that. You know, they're telling you the day and the time and the hour, and then they say, well, I missed that. Well, it's going to be next year, and then it's going to be that next year, and then next year. So I'm going to tell you, if somebody starts telling you the day, the hour, and time, you just know that they're a false prophet, okay? Because it says, but the hour and the day, nor the hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, only the Father. So does anybody know the day and the hour that Jesus is coming? No. We know that he is coming, but we don't know the day or the hour that he's coming. But we can know something about his coming. We can know the season that he's coming because it goes on and says, but this you can know. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the coming of the Son of Man. So when is it going to be? Like in the days of Noah. There was a flood. The people were there eating and drinking. That's happening today. They were marrying. They were getting married. That's happening. But in the day of Noah, they entered into the ark. I bet those suckers wish they were in the ark then. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. See, once the door was shut, it was too late. Once we're raptured, those poor people left behind. That is how it will be at the coming of of the Son of Man. So he's telling us what kind kind of things we can know. I mean, really, he wasn't saying there's something wrong with getting married. He wasn't saying there's something wrong with eating and drinking. But what he was saying is, they would got so wrapped up in their own lifestyle on a day-to-day basis, there's nothing in about Jesus. They left the Lord out of everything. You know, they, they were, didn't even give a thought about God and nothing about concerning, nothing about him coming back, nothing about their spiritual well-being. They're, they're nothing about eternity. That When you talked about, when you went to work, when you're with your friends, it was all about what you want to do, when you want to do it, where you want to go, how you want to spend, what you want to buy. There was no talk about spiritual matters in it at all. It was all for the moment. Uh, They're doing right in their own eyes. Everything was right because it was okay with them. Uh, Nothing about what God's standards was. The standard was what was right in their own eyes. It's much like you see what's going on in the day all across America. Everybody's doing what's right in their own eyes. God has no standard in their life. And very much like what's happening. It's it's like the church today. Most churches today, they never even talk about hell. But hell is real. (laughs) You don't want to be here when we're raptured. But they don't talk about hell. They don't talk about the rapture. They don't talk about Jesus coming back. And just not, not popular to do that. But the truth is, billions of people are going to be raptured and billions of people are going to be left. The Bible says, two men in the field. One's going to be taken and one's going to be left. I'm going, Cecil. Uh, two. <laughs> I, won't, I won't do this. I want to, though. Two women <laughs> grinding with a hand in the mill. One's going to be taken, 
and what's going to be left? <laughs> I, I won't say that. But Heather said, bye, Joy. Uh, <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> what I'm saying is, you can be driving a car and one person can leave, one person can stay. You can be in an airplane, you can be shopping with somebody, one can be left. You can be taking your children to sports, one can be left. You can be out hunting, you can be in church, you can be in bed. This is what the real concern was me for. I never saw it till this morning. People very close to each other, one was saved and one wasn't, and they never mentioned it to the other person. You could be sitting next to somebody right now in church and know they might not know Jesus Christ and Jesus come and you go and they leave. And when you're gone, they're going to go through hell. It's going to be some of the worst torture they've ever seen in your life. You could work with people on a day-to-day basis and never mention Jesus Christ. You could have family members that you love and you never talk about Jesus. And you're going to go to heaven, but they're going to be left behind. And I never saw it as that. And really what he was reminding us is, see, what we're worried about is our day-to-day business. We're worried about paying our bills. We're worried about stress that we have. We're worried about who's right in life. We're worried about politics instead of who's the president. And we ought to be worried about who is in charge. And the real man is Jesus Christ. And he is coming. And see, what it is is, wouldn't it be a shame to spend your life with a friend close to you and never share Jesus Christ with them? I think that we got to be serious about Jesus coming. And we got to be serious about making sure that we share. Whether they accept it or not, it's up to them. But whether we shared it or not, it's up to us. He says, therefore, keep watch. Because... You don't know what day the Lord will come. In other words, you, you know, keep watch. You know, y'all that have kids, if you go to the grocery store or you go shopping, you watch after them because, man, you never know. They're gone. So you're always watching where they at, where they at, and where they at. That's what he's saying. Are, are, are you watching? And whether that is, it's not, I first thought, well, how can you be watching? I mean, I've been doing bird watching photography for a while, so I'm always looking for birds. So I thought, maybe that's what I'm supposed to be doing, looking all over for Jesus, but no. It meant, are you aware on a daily basis that Jesus might return? So become daily aware on a lifestyle basis that Jesus might return and change some of your thinking and some of your lifestyle and some of your living with your family, with your kids, with your workers. Say, hey, you know, let me be aware that Jesus might come. Let me be watching. Let me become aware. What if he came today? Would what I'm doing in my awareness, would it be okay? Because he said, "Don't, don't get ready. He really said, be ready. Matthew 24, 44 says, so you also must be ready because the Son of Man, he'll come at an hour when you do not expect him. <laughs> if I said, every, don't do it. If y'all are really honest, I said, yeah, do y'all expect Jesus to come after the service? Everybody say, no. <laughs> that means he could be coming. He comes at a time we don't expect him to come, so he says, not get ready. He says what? Be ready. So we really need to be ready. And I started thinking, how can we be ready? There's several ways. No one, first of all, if you're here today, there's no better time to make sure you know Jesus Christ because you don't want to stay here. You don't want to worry about who's next to you. You don't want to worry about what other people think. In a little while, when I ask you if you want to accept Jesus Christ, just raise your hand. Don't worry about anybody else. So that's the first way you get ready. I mean, be ready, okay? Number two, number two, is there something you want to say to somebody if you want to tell them that you love them, if it's your mate, if it's your family, if it's anybody today, today, I, I tell you, everybody you're, that's with somebody today, I tell them that I love them. When I was growing up, me and my parents, we just didn't say I love you. They just didn't say that. But I knew they loved me and I loved them, but I want my wife, I want my kids, I want my grandkids to know that I love you. Usually when I hang up on the phone or talk to them, I always say I love you. Maybe there's somebody you need to tell that you love that you hadn't told you love. I would say everybody here today Whoever you're with, I'd tell them if you love them, you love them. Maybe you need to ask somebody to forgive you. Maybe, maybe you think it was their fault. Who, what does it matter? I told somebody this week, they said, well, I, they need to just grow up and quit worrying about it. I said, you know, the most mature person should always be the one that try to make it right. So whether, it's not a matter of right or wrong. It's a matter of, hey, we want, we want peace. We want unity. So if you don't have unity with somebody, I would ask them to forgive you. You say, well, I, well they were wrong. I don't care. Don't you want unity? 
You just want to be right. You want to be right and fight. I can be right and fight, or you can be say, I'm sorry, and have unity and peace. So be ready. Be ready. Somebody you want to ask to forgive you. Somebody I want to say, I'm sorry, some sin to confess, something to stop. I mean, just get ready. Then somebody that you know, somebody that you work with, some family member that might not know Jesus Christ. Two men working together, one was gone, one was left. Two women working together, one was gone, one was left. If you want to witness to them, there's several ways that you can. You can get with joy. I think you go in joy. Raise your hand, joy. Higher joy. You can get with joy, and she'll give you one of these wordless books. Most of these wordless books have a QR code on the back of it. And the book says this. Black represents sin. I've sinned. You've sinned. Everybody in this room has sinned. Sin separates us from God. This red represents the blood of Jesus Christ who died for our sins. If you believe you sinned, you believe Jesus died for our sin and rose on the third day, if you invite him into your heart, that's why he washes away all our sins. And this gold means if he doesn't come to get us first, we'll go to heaven. And this green means to keep growing. And she'll give you one. You could do it that way. Or you can just read the QR code, and I'm doing that on there, and you can go through it with them. Or you can connect with them, and then you can invite them to church. Because, you know, almost every single Sunday... I give the plan of salvation. It gives them an opportunity to accept Christ. But it's our burden to invite. It's their responsibility whether they want to come or not. So I would settle as many things as I could today. Not someday, today. Call, share, love, get right with God, get right with other people. And I wouldn't put it off. Today's the day to be ready. And keep in mind on a day-to-day basis, hey, Jesus could be coming back and live with that in your mind. Let's stand, let's pray. Let's bow our head and close our eyes. God, the most important way to be ready for your coming, first of all, is to make sure we have Jesus Christ as our Savior. When the trumpet blows, we'll go in an instant, in the twinkling of an eye. If not, we'll be left behind. God, I pray every single person in our voice today, whether here or online, When I count to three and I ask you to raise your hand, if you're not sure that you have Jesus Christ, today would be the day that you do that. Don't put it off. So listen, we want to make sure that you're here for the rapture. We want to make sure if you die that you'd go to heaven. On the count of three, if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, one, two, three. Just stick your hand up real high in the air. Just raise your hand and say, hey, man, I want to make sure. I want to make sure. Raise your hand up real high. Keep it up in the air. Say, I want to make sure I get Jesus Christ as my Savior. Keep your hand up till you get a packet. Keep it up, real high in the back. Keep it up. Keep your hand up till you get a package, then you can put it down after that. So I want to make sure I have Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Just raise your hand up, real high. Keep it up there. And then before you leave, give it to the counselor that gave it to you. Man, there's no better time than today to settle that. You know in your heart, either God gives you peace about it, or God is pulling on your heart, and He's telling you, we don't know when the day is going to be, but we do know that He's coming. And when he comes, it's going to be too late. It was just like Noah and the ark. Once he shut the door, they wish they could have got in. Once Jesus does a rapture, you're going to wish you invited him into your heart. So one last time, if you want to invite Jesus Christ into your heart as your Savior, just stick your hand up right now. Just stick it up high in the air, and one of the counselors will give you a package. Also, if you're here today, and God impressed upon you, just like we had baptism a while ago, maybe you were baptized as a child, and and. You didn't really know what you're doing. Or maybe you've been baptized and didn't mean anything, but today you know what you're doing. And God impressed upon your heart, hey, I'm ready to get baptized. And you want to you sign up to be baptized, just raise your hand up in the air. Say, hey, I'm ready to follow through in public baptism. Just say, raise your hand. Say, hey, it's time for me to follow through in public baptism, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Just stick your hand up high. So whether you want to accept Christ, follow through in baptism, or maybe you've been visiting and today's the day. So, hey, I'm ready to make Journey Church my church home. You're ready to join. We got a little packet for you. Just raise your hand up and say, today's the day I'm ready to join Journey Church and make this your home church. This part of your family. We want you to be here. So raise your hand and we'll give you a packet. You want to make Journey Church your home. Accept Christ, fall through in baptism, or join the church. Just raise your hand. All right, let's pray together if we can, okay? Say, dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. 
come into my heart be the Lord of my life I believe Jesus died for my sins and rose from the grave in Jesus name Amen Father I thank you for those that accept Christ God I thank you for everyone here today I thank you God that we could be ready God I know there's other people today that have burdens on their heart I know they need people to pray with and pray for them. God, we've got counselors up front. Whatever God's laid upon your heart, I pray that you would come and you could pray with them and you could leave with a peace that surpasses all understanding, God. You said all that are labor and heavy laden to come where you could find rest. I pray that nobody leaves here without that rest that Jesus Christ promises for them. I pray it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. My